Good afternoon everyone, my name is Thomas and today I'm going to talk about how I use film and short, short fiction as the focus of an English communication course. Teaching with native level film and literature can be daunting at first, particularly with lower levels, but I will be outlining a course I've created and I'm currently teaching, with some examples of activities for both in and out of the classroom, which will hopefully give you some inspiration and useful ideas that you might want to try out and adopt yourself. Please feel free to post any feedback, comments or questions in the chat box below. It would be great to hear your input. First, I'd like to give some background information to the class. The course I'm teaching is a free elective class that meets for one coma a week over one 13 semester, 13 week semester. Students are usually intermediate to upper intermediate level and class sizes have been between 12 and 18 students. Now let's consider the question of why use film and literature? In a study by Harlow and Weiskins, intermediate students rated film and video fourth and reading seventh in importance on a list of 19 activities for teaching foreign languages. Above these, these were put placed above grammar exercises, oral presentations, role plays and games. Whereas instructors place film and video twelfth and reading ninth. On the list. This suggests that intermediate students may place a higher relevance on film and reading in langu language learning than instructors. Film and literature can provide a depth and meaningfulness absent or lacking in textbook and graded materials. As said by Ruxel Kubeli in reference to teaching French through film, where textbooks often limit students' scope to the presentation of vocabulary and grammar items with a culture note, Films allow for a meaningful exploration of the themes presented. I believe this also applies to literature as well. Culture can be viewed and learnt in a more authentic way, helping to create a level of interest and engagement with students which EFL-specific materials cannot. Students can also gain exposure to unfamiliar but contextualised vocabulary as well as new accents and dialects in film. Finally, students are rewarded with a sense of accomplishment, knowing that the text they finished reading or watching was native level. In a post-course survey I conducted with students from my class last year, 78% of students expressed a sense of achievement after, after watching each film, while 94% of students expressed a sense of achievement uh, after finishing each short story. This suggests that the challenge of completing and understanding film and literature was in fact motivating and not deterring for the students. In the pre-course survey, I also asked students which skill they thought was the most difficult. As you can see on the chart on the left, the majority of students said reading was the most difficult. However, when I surveyed them at the end of the course, the majority of students said reading was the skill they felt they had most improved in the course, the second highest being listening. There are a few different approaches to teaching film and literature that can be adopted to facilitate student engagement and comprehension. First is the reader-viewer response approach. Um, this assigns activities which help learners use their prior knowledge and own experience to give meaning to a text. This could be in the form of predictive activities or mind maps based on a setting or topic in the narrative. Some examples of questions might be, um, think of a time when new, or what would you do if? Another approach is to identify and isolate the story grammar of the narrative by separating the story into identifiable structured episodes that follow a conventional pattern, for example, the plot structure. Linked with this is also story schema, which relies on the learner's own interpretation of the story grammar and their mental representation and relationships between these parts. Therefore, in the first weeks of the course, I focus solely on plot and plot structure in order to give students the tools to recognize uh, the story grammar of the film and short story narratives. Using the set texts, the goals of the course are to expose students to new ideas, themes and cultures, provide extensive listening and reading practice, and facilitate critical thinking through in-class discussion. The course is broken down into four two-week topics, um, with a natural progression from plot to characterization to setting to themes and symbolism. 
Each topic has a set film and short story text which were alternated week by week, film then short story. Students also wrote an essay and gave a presentation at the end of the semester. Um, one of these assignments had to be on a book or short story of their own choice and the other on a film. Things I considered when selecting the texts were the length. I decided films should be under two hours long and I chose short stories that were no more than four pages long. Linguistic difficulty as well was also considered, as well as social and cultural relevance and interest to the students. I wanted to show students um, texts from a variety of genres and about different cultures, settings and periods. Lastly, appropriacy to the lesson topic. Uh, in this case, plot, characterization, setting, themes and symbolism. Each film and short story was paired with a topic in order to provide students with a focus whilst watching or reading. Next, I'd like to go over some of the course texts I chose and why. First, with the films, um, I chose Gladiator. Plot, uh, because of the plot and characterization are very visually presented, accents are fairly neutral, and the plot follows the conventional structure. Next, we watched Lost in Translation. I chose this film so that students could discuss a setting which is both familiar and yet portrayed differently from a visitor's point of view. Next, we watched Psycho. I wanted students to watch a film which was full of themes and symbolism, but also from a different time, um, being made in the 1960s, since a lot of students have only watched modern films. Lastly, we watched East is East. This film was the last in the course and we were continuing the discussion on theme. So I wanted to expose students to an unexpected part of British culture, um, since it's about a half Pakistani immigrant family living in Northern England and dealing with themes of family, racism and cultural identity. Here is some of the feedback students gave on the film texts. As you can see, Psycho received a lot of positive feedback from students attributed to students being exposed to a type of film they wouldn't normally watch. And here is some of the negative feedback on those same film texts. Lost in Translation received the most negative feedback because of its unconventional open ending and its somewhat negative view of Tokyo. Next, I'd like to focus on the short stories um, I chose for the course. Firstly, we read Grimm's Fairy Tales, a selection of these. Um, these were the first short stories students read in class. I wanted something familiar to students with which students could read and summarize the plot of easily. Next, we read Roald Dahl's Lamb to the Slaughter. Uh, this is a humorous story in which a woman kills her husband with a leg of lamb and then proceeds to feed that leg of lamb to the police. This story has some interesting characterization of the woman um, who the story makes us feel sympathy towards and also of her husband who we are not sympathetic to. Uh, next we read Murakami's After Dark chapter one um, of this novel. It describes Tokyo with some beautiful imagery and also introduces the reader to two characters who meet for the first time. Therefore, I thought it worked well with Lost in Translation for setting and also for characterization discussion. Lastly, we read a short story by Kate Chopin called Desiree's Baby, um, written, in 19, uh, sorry, written in 1893. This was the last short story of the course and was perhaps the most challenging, but it was fruitful in discussing its themes of race, colonialism and identity, which I felt complemented East is East well. Let's move on to course content and some of the activities I gave students to do outside the classroom. Homework assigned for each film or short story was broken up into three sections, before, during and after, each with different goals and emphasis. The before activities were intended to help students activate schemata through context, allowing students the opportunity to mentally prepare by engaging with the themes, settings and ideas before viewing the text. This can be achieved through a variety of activities, for example, self-directed research into themes and setting, open-ended questions about the students, which help students empathize with the story or characters, and predictions ta prediction tasks based on the title, a screenshot, or even a short excerpt of the text. Vocabulary activities were also an important tool in aiding student comprehension, pro sorry, comprehension, which, 
as well as giving students a head start on difficult vocabulary they will encounter, help students predict the content of the narrative. Take, for example, the film Gladiator. As part of the before activities, they were given a vocabulary matching activity which included the following words, empire, dictatorship, senate, corruption, gladiator, and hero. By completing this activity, students already gained a sense of what the narrative of the film might be. With literature, research suggests that unlike with L1, most L2 readers do not seem to use visual imaging very much whilst reading. But the few students who reported using visual imaging tended to achieve greater comprehension and recall than those who did not. Quoted from Tomlinson, 1998. He goes on to outline some activities that can be used to facilitate visual imaging, including character drawing, connection activities, connecting the narrative to events in their own lives or to another text, using illustrations to form their own visualizations, and also miming. Therefore, based on these suggestions, in both before and during sections, I incorporated some visual imaging activities into the short story worksheets, particularly with characterization. Activities inside the classroom were meant to check comprehension of the texts, as well as share and discuss the aspects of film and literature considered in the homework assignments. Some activities include uh, group and class mind mapping and discussing, which allowed students to share ideas informally and help to peer check comprehension. Text and scene analysis. Um, this allows students to focus on aspects of the text, such as language, body language, camera angles, and also camera techniques. Some discussion questions for this might include describe what is happening in this section or scene. Why is the scene shot in this way? How does this make you feel? How would you describe the character of X in this section alone? And how is this section important to the whole film or story? Lastly, individual and group presentations. Um, students were able to apply the analysis techniques learned in the class to a film, book, short story of their own choice. Next, I'm going to show you some specific examples of the activities I had students do both in and out of the classroom. With plot, we began by learning about the conventional plot arc and applied it to films and sh stories students were already familiar with. I had students keep descriptions vague without character names so that they could be used in a group guessing game. Then we looked at three different stories uh, taken from Grimm's fairy tales which students summarised with the plot points individually, checked in groups, and then shared in groups of three. This helped students establish a familiarity with story grammar, which could be utilised in understanding more difficult text later in the course. With characterization, we watched Gladiator and read Lamb to the Slaughter. For Gladiator, students made mind maps of the three main characters. The SEAL acronym mentioned in the directions is in reference to speech, effect on others, actions and looks, which helps students pinpoint how characterization is portrayed in film. With the short story, I had students draw pictures of the main character, Mary, to help activate their visual imaging. Since Lost in Translation is mostly set in Tokyo, I had students think about how they would describe Tokyo and predict locations that might be used in the film before watching. Then, as they watched, students wrote adjectives to describe each location and also how the characters interacted with them. Then, in class, we focused on some scene analysis, in particular how Kyoto is contrasted with Tokyo. Lastly, instead of having students find symbols themselves in the films, which I felt could be difficult and detract from actual observation and analysis. I gave students three prominent symbols used throughout the film Psycho and had students note down their observations of them. In class, I used scene analysis and quotation analysis to dissect the use of each symbol and guide students to their own interpretations of meaning. In the post-course survey, I asked students to think about which they preferred, film or short story and why. The majority of students said they preferred film because it was easier to imagine and that the sound and movement helped students understand more. However, some students preferred reading because they could read at their own pace. 
This shows that film and literature presented different challenges to the students, but also gave a variety which helped engage students differently. Given the current situation, lastly, I just wanted to highlight some of the changes I've made to the course and how I've adapted it to the shorter semester online teaching and a large mixed ability class I'm in the middle of at the moment. In order to shorten the course, I've adopted to teach only film and no short stories this semester. Given that past students had enjoyed films more than literature and also had found it easier, them easier to comprehend. Since distributing DVDs and film screenings on campus aren't possible this term, I made some changes to the course texts to ensure they were all available on Netflix, which I gave students access to a shared account of. Students are also encouraged this term to assess their own ability and watch each film either without subtitles, with English subtitles or with Japanese subtitles as necessary. Instruction this term is partly done through an online LMS platform where weekly homework, homework assignments are posted and also where students have access to an online blog or thread for each film. And this is a space for students to discuss their thoughts, ideas and peer check their comprehension in preparation for the class. For classroom work I've been using Zoom and for group work I've been using breakout rooms with shared whiteboards, allowing me to see and question their dis discussion points as I monitor through the rooms. I have also been conducting weekly anonymous feedback at the end of each class in the form of a scale which students annotate where they are with difficulty and comprehension of the lesson and texts. This has helped me to tailor future lessons to the students ability. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I look forward to answering any questions you have uh, uh, or reading any feedback you have in the chat box below. Thank you very much for listening.